So throughout our 3D printer factory, we have a lot of areas that have these things inside of them. These drawer organizers are located all over the place to hold like spare parts, like nozzles, or within our assembly line for our printers in order to hold individual screws for each station and that kind of thing. The problem is, is that they have to be reconfigured in order to have just the number of drawers for just the number of parts in that station, which means that we end up with all of these empty slots. They also are just standard little drawers with little tubs of stuff inside of there, and that's not terribly useful for what we wanna do within production and within the context of mass producing our machines. So we decided to just go ahead and redo this because we couldn't purchase a solution that we actually wanted. And in the process of that, when designing something like this for mass production 3D printing, you end up making something like this. So really there's nothing wrong with standard organizing modules. They're actually fine for the normal person, but inside of a production environment, you want to reduce stimuli and improve information without really overcomplicating anything. And those standard types of drawers just aren't very useful for either one of those things because they, you have to buy a whole set that is, has a lot of empty drawers, which gives people duds or just has an empty slot there that is bad information for a person. But within a production system, you want the systems inside the factory to give feedback to a user so that a person knows when something is running low or when something needs to be ordered. And these standard types of drawers don't really do that. Since they're just empty and plastic here, basically made from an injection mold, uh, they are not terribly useful. They don't have any information in them. They're just a bowl that's in the shape of a drawer. But overall, they're very cheap and very affordable to work with, which is their advantage. But we are really going for a very high level of functionality and these could not be manufactured affordably with injection molding with a high level of reliability because it'd just be too expensive to create the variations that we need. So we ended up making this module. Now here is the drawer again, right here, just like so. But you can notice there's a number of interesting features about it. Number one, the drawer comes with its own little section, its own little module. Now, we are gonna talk about this a little bit more, but this module does not need magnets in it to be combined with other ones or anything like that. It just needs to be present because since 3D printing is a digital manufacturing process, there's a number of interesting things we can do here. So the drawer itself, uh, we made a standard handle and it is designed to be printed like this, vertical just like so. You can see that down here we have a chamfered edge and the reason for that is that the drawer has a hole in the back. That way the drawer itself has a flat area directly against the bed so it's well adhered and you don't have to worry about wobble or support or interface between the different parts because this entire assembly prints completely just like this and comes off the machine fully complete with drawer and outer housing. But that chamfer makes sure that you have contact with the bed, but then not contact with the drawer itself. The drawer itself has a large chamfered area in the back that is kind of thick, which gives it a lot more rigidity, and again, serves as protection for that if necessary, but it shouldn't ever be necessary because this is not going to sag. But this way, this is stuck to the bed reliably, this is stuck to the bed reliably, and it's all printing together as one unit. That way, if you're doing like a print on demand sort of a situation, the entire assembly and all the parts for that assembly are gone in one print, which is what you wanna do if you can do it cleanly. You don't generally wanna batch parts, but it can be done. The other thing is, uh, the front handle of the drawer itself is angled like this. This way you have no direct overhangs, but you still have a good place to grab. Uh, the problem with this is that you have layer lines going this direction, which means that if somebody bumps this outer lip generally, it could potentially snap off if you're using a really brittle material like PLA. So what we did is we added just a small rib to the middle there, which does not affect how you grab it or get a hold of it at all, it's just fine. Um, but that gives it just a little bit more rigidity and reliability so that it can't just split and break off really easily if it was just a thin little layer there that almost acts like a perforated edge. Uh, this front face, we made perfectly flat this direction even though it could be angled in order to better show off labels. Same could be done for the bottom here. Basically this whole front face can be readjusted to do whatever you want. Within the drawer itself, one thing we tried, we're not sure if we're gonna stick with it, is we actually made the drawer a tad too long. So you can see that gap there. That's basically so you have a peek hole into the drawer to see if there's screws and stuff sitting inside of there without having to open it up. That way people always have a view of what is inside of there as well as the label on the front. That way it has a really quick visual indicator. Lastly, inside of here, you will see there's this little wedge sitting right there, which basically creates a pocket in the back. 
On this little wedge is the word that says reorder. So this is meant to hold a set of screws at a particular workstation. In manufacturing, there's something called a Kanban system. A Kanban system is basically a visual indicators that tell people when they get to somewhere in the process what to do next. So if you have like a stack of parts, you might take a Kanban tag and shove it into the bottom of the stack of parts so that when people get down to just 10 pieces remaining, that tag says go order more. That is what we've done here. You would fill this entirely up with screws and then once they are starting to get low, it reveals this tag, this information that says reorder more. And it tells them to reorder before they're totally out because you still have this little pocket of extra parts in the back. This is a really efficient way to make sure that you don't run down to zero before people say, oh, I need to get more parts. That way you don't have stops in production. And it's a very simple thing to do, but you can't really do it with these because you end up trying to show sticky notes or make some kind of custom paper logo in there or a secondary little container. It's just really unhandy to do with this kind of stuff. Whereas we're able to build it into the drawer right here. And since it's 3D printed, we can move and adjust this to make sure that it's the perfect quantity left over when people need to reorder. Or this just tells people to go back to inventory and get more screws so that again, you don't end up with people pulling up in the drawer and the drawer is completely empty. This little reorder tag is there to do that. What we would generally like to do is maybe paint to that a color so that it really pops a lot um, or use a different color other than this kind of pearl white uh, that we used for these prints. But this is a very handy thing that you're able to add in because we have complete control of the design. Now, that's the design of the drawer. This is now a mass producible part. We can make tens of thousands of these very easily in our print farms, which is all well and good because it makes it competitive with these types of things. And since we're able to design it with printing, we're able to create some features that wouldn't generally be molded because it would be too expensive to get started. And you're able to create functionalities that wouldn't otherwise be available. You can almost create a whole e-commerce store around designs of organizers for specific applications. But now let's talk about that outer drawer that we were discussing before. This outer drawer is useful because inside of the CAD model, this is what you see. But we don't want one of these. Very rarely do we have a station where we want one little drawer. That's just irritating. That's just a bin. You generally want a stack of them because that's what we're used to. But like we said, this stack is unhandy because this is almost too many for some stations where they might have three or four or maybe 10 screws, but not 15. And you can't order really small sections of these readily or easily because this whole outer frame needs to be made all at once to make it worth it. So uh, in order for us to do it, we took this standard module. And since this is a standard size module, you could design it so it has interlocking features on the outside or like magnet slots, but that's not really ideal for production because now you're dealing with assembly and post processing. And you don't really wanna do that. And if you were to do a 3D printed connecting thing, like inside of our joining videos where we talk about this kind of stuff, that's fine, but it doesn't look very good. All of these blocks stacked up and wedged together or pressed together just isn't very sexy. So you wanna make a product. Well, again, we're using 3D printing, which means that when a customer makes an order, you can print and ship exactly what that customer ordered. You don't have to make large quantities of inventory. So we can use this digital file and then replicate it and pattern it into different variations that people are able to use. And this is an example of one of those variations. We took this module and inside of the digital model just replicated it three times, or we could go four times, or we could go three by three and make a square. Anything we want to do, we can make a module that would do this. This way, a person could order a single module if they're being silly, or they can order a one by three or a three by three, and then that entire assembly is printed all at once because these come off the machine just like that, and then you ship them. Also, nifty little side note here that we didn't discuss before. At the bottom of each one of these, right here in the front, there is a small sprue. In order to keep this part together so it doesn't rattle all apart in shipping, but then a person just has to pull hard or maybe snip it off in order to release the drawers, which is exactly the same way these things work. They, they just have tape across the top, which is again, another manufacturing step that you want to avoid. Right here, a full assembly comes off of a machine fully ready to ship. You can take this off of the machine, throw it into a box, which is really uncommon. And to be able to make something like this is not easy. You could, if you were manufacturing something like this traditionally, of course, get this molded and then get the outer frame molded and you'd have to get five or six different frames to show all the different sizes and that kind of thing. It's just not economical. But with mass production printing, you can print the part off all at once on demand for your customer and you're able to create solutions 
options and colors that you otherwise wouldn't be able to get a hold of. We can now get one that's yellow for one station and black for another station and white for that station and so on and so forth. So that number one, the drawers match the section that they belong with. So if somebody takes out this drawer and carries it off someplace else and they're wondering where it belongs, it belongs with a case that matches that color. Whereas you don't really have that with these unless you explicitly go through there and paint this or put a sticky note in it or something like that. And they make sure, oh, it matches the outer casing or putting labels on so everybody's reading. It's just bad for manufacturing. Now, would this always be turned into a product? Not necessarily. This is actually quite expensive to produce compared to this. But the added benefits, the optimization, the reliability that this can add to our factory while people are using it is a really big deal because it reduces confusion, it improves reliability, and with like the added advantages like the Kanban stickers in there, it reduces uh, back-end kind of post-processing to prep this up so that it can be work used in a factory. So the additional cost is not exceptional, but it's present, but it's paid for because you have all these additional benefits of the freedom of the design of the process to create a single module and then modify it, expand it, and change it into whatever we want. You can do an L shape, you can do whatever and modify these so that they can be used wherever you need them. So that is an interesting kind of design study of how you can take something mundane and made with traditional processes and really elevate it to create a whole new product that takes advantages of what 3D printing can offer as far as on-demand production, high variability of parts, and print-in-place assemblies so that you don't have additional assembly. Have a great day, everybody.